Have you ever been told that you don't have enough bone for dental implants because of your sinuses? Or that you need a sinus lift for getting dental implants? And you wondered, wow, a sinus lift. Not sure what that is, but it sounds a bit scary. Well, it certainly does sound alarming, but in reality, it is a relatively minor procedure. And now it can be done with minimally invasive techniques, with quick recovery, and minimal risk of complications. The fact is getting a dental implant is faster in healing and causes a lot less discomfort than even a tooth extraction, even if it's done with a sinus lift bone graft. So today, I'm gonna to show you a remarkable, minimally invasive sinus lift technique that allows you to get the implants and the teeth that you want without the prolonged recovery or the significant discomfort. I'm Dr. Ryan Kazemi, and welcome to Hints and Tips in Dentistry. In our last episode, we talked about how to prevent sinus perforations during dental implant placement, which can happen if there is insufficient hot or bone due to sinus proximity or poor planning. A reliable and long-standing solution to bone deficiency in the back of the upper jawbone has been the sinus leaf bone grafting. Does it work? Absolutely. And is it predictable? Yes. But it is considered a moderately invasive surgical technique. And if it's not done properly or correctly, it can lead to complications, including sinus infections. So how can we create a sufficient heart of bone for support of dental implants and do it with less complications and quicker recovery for our patients? Today, we'll visit a new and remarkable minimally invasive technique to do just that. Now, one of the main requirements for successful dental implant therapy is having sufficient quantity and quality of bone, which are both common challenges in the back area of the upper jawbone. The bone in this area has very commonly a low bone density, what we refer to as D3 or D4 bone. And also, following tooth loss, it is quite expected and common to have the sinus floor migrate downward, hence limiting the height of bone that's available for implant placement. This is the process that we refer to as pneumatization. On top of that, we have high chewing forces in back area of the jawbone, very high occlusal forces. So we have to consider uh, our treatments in a way that we can optimize the implant diameter and length and improve the overall support because we do have these challenges to face. So when we have insufficient bone height for implant placement, we must consider a technique to augment the vertical height of bone sufficient for support of the dental implant. And here's the reason why. We do require a minimal eight and a half millimeter of implant length for sufficient support of the restoration. And we also recommend to have a minimal two millimeters of bone separation from the sinus. And if we don't have the adequate height for this dimension and the support of this implant, then a sinus leaf bone grafting is recommended. Now, let's talk about what sinus leaf bone grafting is. It is simply a technique to raise the level of the sinus floor. And this is how it works. The first step is a technique that allows us to tent the sinus floor membrane. Next, we place a bone graft material in the area created between the jawbone and the new level of the sinus membrane. Next, we place the dental implant, appropriate size and length with the adequate separation from the sinus floor, and let it mature and heal for about six months before it is ready for uh, the restoration. Now, this procedure can be done either at the same time, meaning that the implant placement and the bone grafting can be done together, or in some circumstances, it must be done in a delayed approach, 
And this is really based on the decision, um, uh, based on the amount of the existing bone and the primary stability of the implant. Now, there are two types of sinus lift bone grafting techniques. There is a conventional technique known as lateral window, and this is also known as external. With this technique, a window is created on the outer side of the jawbone with access to the sinus area to elevate the sinus membrane and perform the bone graft. And this is considered to be more of the invasive approach uh, conventionally and traditionally thought of. The second approach is known as the crestal approach. This is an internal where essentially an access is created in the area where the implant is going to be placed and this is considered to be a less invasive technique. Now, for best results, we must optimize certain properties. There are three important properties that we must optimize and make sure that we have for, for a complete success. The first is we need to have bone quality. We need to have excellent bone quality. How do we do that? By the type of bone graft that's placed and also how it's placed, a technique known as densification, which we'll talk about in a few moments. The second factor that's really important to address is the quantity of bone, just how much of it do we have. And of course, we can affect this by the bone augmentation, the sinus lift procedure being the technique of choice in this circumstance. And the third is the implant to bone interface this is essentially the contact between the implant surface and the bone, which we need to maximize as much contact as possible. And this is directly related to the implant size, both its diameter as well as its length. So how can we do this? How can we meet these requirements for optimal success and do it with less swelling, less surgery, less complications, less cost, while we optimize our results and also faster recovery for our patients. This is what brings us to this remarkable technique known as osteodensification. There are three aspects of osteodensification, three benefits from this technique. The first is ridge expansion. The second is biotype conversion of the bone, essentially taking it from a thin biotype, D3, D4, and converting it into a D1 or D2. And the third is the sinus lift, which we'll address and I'll show you in a few moments, essentially being able to use this osteodensification technique to raise a sinus floor in a most conservative and minimally in invasive technique. So this approach for sinus lift bone grafting, known as, uh, known as osteodensification, essentially involves using a specialized instrumentation, which known as Densabird, which allows us to compact and densify the bone at the time of the implant placement. This allows us to essentially make the bone denser and also raise the sinus floor by a reverse rotation of this specialized instrument. And when it's done effectively with a guided approach, it is usually no more than a 30 minute procedure to be able to place the implant and do the sinus lift procedure all at the same time. Now let's look at a couple of examples. Here's a patient that presented with pneumatization of the sinus. There's inadequate height of bone. There's about 4.7 millimeters of bone height. And through our digital planning and computer-assisted implant simulation, we determined that we like to have a wider implant and 10 millimeters in height for proper support in this particular patient. And with a requirement of two millimeters of bone between the sinus and the implant, we need to have about eight millimeters of bone uh, augmentation. So this was done using the sinus lift osteodensification, placement of the implant at the same time, and here is the outcome afterward. This was done through the access 
where the implant was done and the outcome was quite satisfactory. The second patient, here's a patient that has about 8.2 millimeters of height of bone. And through our digital diagnostics, we, again, we like to place a 10 millimeter implant and using the osteodensification technique, we go ahead and raise the sinus, do the bone graft, place the implant at the same time, again, with the same result of great bone augmentation and the adequate separation between the two, while we're maximizing our diameter and length of the implant for long-term support. The third example, a patient with a six millimeter height of bone, obviously inadequate slightly for the selected size implant. In this case, we have planned to place the eight and a half millimeter implant. We're about two and a half millimeters short. If we add the other two millimeters of separation necessary between the implant and the sinus floor, we require about four and a half to five millimeters of bone height, additional bone height. So here we are again with a sinus lift using the osteodensification technique, implant placement at the same time, and six months later, we have adequate support for the implant, proper bone coverage, separating the sinus from the implant tip. This implant has the proper diameter, the wide body with good height, which optimizes the bone to implant um, interface and contact. At the same time with the densification, we converted the bone to a more dense bone. So we really met the qualifications or the properties that we were looking for earlier. Better bone, more bone, and also better contact with the implant and better integration for long-term um, results. So my tips for how to optimize implant success with minimally invasive sinus lift and site enhancement are the following. First, and most important, we must have proper diagnostics. We have talked about this previously, a cone beam CT scan for precise localization of the sinus. Second, using this minimally invasive osteodensification technique to optimize the bone quality and the quantity. Third, using specific type of a bone graft material that's introduced to the site right from the same axis and densified in position. Fourth, selection of a shorter but, but wider dental implants that optimizes the implant to surface interface, more bone contact, better integration, better stability, and obviously the longevity and the success that we're looking for in long term. Being able to eat and function again with confidence of implant supported teeth is a life changing experience for many patients who are missing teeth. With advanced implant techniques, materials and minimally invasive techniques, implants can be done with great success with minimal discomfort and risks. Remember, insufficient bone does not preclude you from getting dental implants and enjoying the benefits of having teeth again. And if you don't have enough bone because of your sinus position, know that osteodensification and other minimally invasive bone augmentation techniques can help you get the implants and the teeth you want with remarkably quick recovery, less pain, and less complications. I'm Dr. Ryan Kazemi. I'll see you again soon on our next hints and tips in dentistry.